Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the um, 10 most common thyroid symptoms and we're going to explain why they occur so that you have a better understanding of what's going on in your body. So we got a lot to talk about, so let's jump right in here. So number one, um, and I would say probably one of the more concerning side effects of, of, hypo, of being in a hypothyroid state would be this one, and it is unexplained weight gain. All right, and so what do I mean by unexplained weight gain? Your, um, this, would be, this would be people who gain weight despite um, not making any changes to what they eat or how frequently they exercise. So as an example, let's say that you're, you know, you are, let's say 150 pounds and um, you're, you're, you're maybe a little overweight, you're not really happy that weight, um, but you're there. And then, you know, you're, everything's going the same as it, as it was normally. And then all of a sudden, over a month, you gain 10 pounds. Then the next month, you gain another 10 pounds. So in a 60-day period, you suddenly went from, from 150 to 170, and you didn't change anything, right? You're not, there's no stress going on in your life. Um, you know, you haven't, you, you've been sleeping okay, um, uh, no trauma, any, you know, nothing like, no depression, nothing like that has happened to you. You just gained 20 pounds over a 60-day period. That is not normal, right? That should never happen. And so what, what some would say is they would say okay well that's probably because you've been eating more right or you you haven't been exercising like you would have or and that's usually what people think about first they, they think to themselves what how could this have possibly been am I, am I not walking as much am I you know whatever right it's it's not about that it's about the changes that are occurring inside of your body at a hormonal level so if you recall um, thyroid hormones involved in the setting your basal metabolic rate and what that means is how many calories you burn at rest okay so um, that means, and this is, by the way, the most important metric for determining how much weight you're going to lose and, and not only how much you're going to lose, but how much you're going to keep off um, if you do manage to lose weight. So thyroid directly impacts that measure, which obviously directly impacts your ability to lose weight. And therefore, if it's too low, then you tend to gain weight, etc. Now, it, all, it does that, but then it also uh, causes you to have unexpl unexplained weight gain through its effects on other hormones. So specifically, those would be leptin and insulin. So you, so low thyroid states encourage insulin resistance and it and encourages um, leptin resistance, which of course lead to weight gain as well. So unexplained w weight gain was a, a huge, a really big one. Okay, so the inability to lose weight despite changing your diet and exercising more. Now this is a this is another really big one, um, different from the first one because like let's say let's say going on with that scenario, we say okay, you've gained that 20 pounds and you're like. I'm, I'm going to be able to do something, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to exercise more, and I'm going to eat a little bit less. So let's say you do that, right? And let's say that nothing happens. Instead, you might even gain another five pounds, okay? So now you're in a, a predicament here, right? And this is a predicament that a lot of hypothyroid patients find themselves in. They, they do what they think they know is going to work, and by the way, what might have worked you know, 10 or 20 years ago, like for instance, let's say if they gained a little bit of weight in the past, they would just, you know, they just buckle down, eat a little bit more healthy and exercise a little bit more and boom, that weight comes off. No big deal. But now it's a different story. And again, that is not normal. Now, obviously, if you, if you've been listening to the stuff that I say, you definitely shouldn't be focusing on eating less and exercising more. Um, so I'm not recommending that you do that for weight loss. But what I am saying is, the inability to lose weight while doing that is is not a normal sign, right? That's a problem of some sort of hormonal imbalance. Um, I use the example here of the Biggest Loser study, um, and so what what basically what this study showed. I'm just going to briefly outline it here because I've talked about it in the past. Is that patients who who do um, who try to lose weight by eating less and exercising more, they develop metabolic damage. And what that means is their basal metabolic rate um, is less than what it should be. So in the Biggest Loser study, this this showed that the patients who underwent that that extreme dieting and that extreme exercising program, they had about on average a 600 to 700 calorie deficit when they compared them to age match normal control. So what that means is they were burning six to 700 calories less than a normal person each and every day. So, and by the way, obviously they almost all, except for I think one in the study, gained all their weight back. So obviously this is not what you wanna be doing. Um, it, it supports all the other things that I've been talking about in the past, but this is like the epitome of eating less and exercising more, and it's proof right in front of your face that it just does not work. So again, you don't wanna do that. That's, that's, a, that's a bad sign that you can't lose weight. Um, so obviously not normal. Um, number three is crushing fatigue or low energy levels. So this has to do with how how thyroid hormone impacts your body's ability to produce energy. So at the at the at the very core, your body must produce energy in order for you to live. Now, does does not having enough thyroid hormone mean mean that you produce zero energy? Of course not. If that were the case, then you would you wouldn't survive. You would die. So instead, like a, and I've used this analogy in the past, you got to consider that your body is more of like a machine in terms of its efficiency. So 
having low thyroid hormone doesn't mean that the machine is going to stop working completely. It just means that it's going to be working less efficient than it was previously. So as an example, let's say, you know, it's working at hundred percent efficiency. You're feeling great. Your body weight is great. Your body temperature is fine. Your resting heart rate is great. And then all of a sudden you, you, you know, you become hypothyroid. Well, now it's working at 70% of normal. So it's still working. It's just not working as well. And that 70% reduction in energy, guess what? Guess, guess how you, that manifests in your body as weight gain, right? Because if you're not burning that excess energy, then it's being stored in your body and it's usually being stored as fat. Now, occasionally, yeah, it can be, it can be stored as glycogen in the liver, but, but that's only 2000 calories worth of energy. So for, forget that for now. Majority of that energy is going to be stored in your fat cells. Now, how does thyroid hormone come in here? Well, like I said, thyroid hormone directly impacts the production of energy in your mitochondria. And that's specifically done by the hormone T3. Okay. So T3 improves your energy production. If you have low levels of thyroid hormone, that energy production decreases the amount of ATP, TB, adenosine triphosphate or AKA ATP that's being produced reduces and the efficiency of that whole system reduces. Okay. Another big one is unexplained hair loss. Um, this is a huge one. Uh, Man, I, I don't want to harp on this one too much just because of our time here. But th again, this is never a normal thing. You should never just, you know, be minding your own business, you know, and, um, you know, noticing that clumps of hair is, is coming out of your head when you shower, things like that, or that your ends are breaking or, you know, any sort of weird changes to your, to your hair is not normal. Now, this happens through a couple different ways. So first of all, thyroid hormone has a direct influence on the hair follicles themselves, meaning that thyroid hormone tells the hair follicles to grow. So if you don't have that stimulus, then that's not going to be there, which means you're going to have more hair fall out, then more hair is growing, therefore hair is going to thin over time. Okay, that one's pretty straightforward. Then the second one is a little more sinister, and that one is that one is mediated through thy the thyroid hormone's uh, effects on the absorption of other nutrients involved in hair growth and and the sustaining of, of of your hair. So specifically, those two would be iron and vitamin B12. So hypothyroid states encourage vitamin iron deficiency, and it, it encourages vitamin B12 deficiency, and therefore that can further impair um, issues with your hair. So what happens here? is patients may um, replace their thyroid hormone, but their hair still falls out. And there's, well, what's going on? Well, you have to replace the other deficiencies that your thyroid hormone caused to be in order to get your hair to grow back. So always be putting that in the back of your head if you have hair loss. Uh, the next one is menstrual irregularities, another big one. Um, so thyroid hormone, the way that this works is that thyroid hormone um, seems to be directly involved with progesterone. Okay. And so progesterone is the natural balance if you're a female to estrogen in the body. So that you can kind of think of estrogen and progesterone as a yin and yang in which they need to be balanced. If there's an imbalance of one, um, then generally what it's going to lead to is, is a subset of symptoms. Now, in most people, what happens is they have a hypothyroid state, therefore they have low progesterone, and they're also not ovulating quite as much, with it, which exacerbates low progesterone. So they're in a state of relatively more estrogen to progesterone. And that state is called estrogen dominance. Um, and it results in a bunch of symptoms that, that symptoms like PMS, PMDD, fibrocystic breast disease, endometriosis, um, et cetera. Those, those high estrogen states, PCOS being up there too, um, although that's a different story. So these high estrogen states um, can be caused um, as a result of the impact that thyroid hormone has on progesterone. Okay, so that may be where your menstrual irregularities are coming from. By the way, also, this is another reason why hypothyroid, hypothyroid patients tend to have issues with fertility, okay, um, and also those with PCOS, etc. cetera. Uh, number six would be changes in mood, including depression. Okay, so we don't really know why thyroid hormone has a direct effect on depression. We just know that it does. So you kind of have to take my word from it. The studies are clear. It shows that hypothyroid patients are more likely to be depressed. They're more likely to have um, psychiatric disorders, like especially bipolar disease, um, increased uh, su suicide rates, et cetera. They, they, just, they, they seem to have higher rates of all of these things. Um, we just don't know exactly why that it is. But I would mention one quick thing here is that T3 specifically has been shown to be very, very, very effective in treating bipolar disorder. Okay, so um, I'm not going to talk about the study here because that's not the focus of this, but you can read it if you're interested or have somebody or know somebody that has bipolar disorder um, down here. Um, obviously, uh, thyroid hormone, this is number seven, causes changes to other hormone systems in the body. And this is why I think thyroid hormone is one of the more critical in hormone imbalances that can exist in your body. Why? Because it directly affects all of the other hormones in your body, which leads to a whole, which leads to a plethora of symptoms that can occur, which I think is why a lot of patients out there are suffering and when they get their thyroid hormone replacement that they've been looking for, it doesn't fix all these other problems, right? These are all individual problems by themselves. 
So what am I talking about? So first of all, hypothyroidism can lead to changes in testosterone, usually low testosterone, especially um, in male. In terms of insulin, low hypothyroid states can lead to insulin resistance, which leads to weight gain. Um, hypothyroid states can lead to leptin resistance, which leads to not only weight gain, but also difficulty in weight loss. Um, hypothyroid states leads to a, a, well, changes in cortisol. Generally, it's felt to be higher cortisol levels, but eventually over time that may turn into low cortisol level. It just kind of depends on the person and how they react. But the point is it changes is the, the cortisol. Um, and then also progesterone. We've talked about that in terms of its effects on menstrual irregularities. So just know that it exists. Um, the other one is chronic pain or muscle tenderness. So the way that this works is your thyroid hormone. Well, let's talk about it like this. Your muscles contract and actually to contract your muscles, you don't need energy to contract them. So if like you flex your biceps right now, your body would be able to do that on its own without without energy being involved in that process. Where energy is involved is in the relaxation of muscles. Okay, so so keep that in the back of your head. So what happens in hypothyroid states, especially if there's not enough thyroid hormone getting into your muscles, that means that parts of your muscles can contract and they have difficulty relaxing. So what do you think is going to happen if I take my finger and start poking on the muscles and I find points of muscle tension of contracted muscle? It's going to hurt, right? Now, now consider too that some of these areas are, are the common ones which are seen in fibromyalgia patients. So that's why there's been a link between fibromyalgia and to hypothyroidism and why some cases of fibromyalgia, which may have been misdiagnosed but doesn't really matter, and chronic pain are, can be linked directly to how thyroid hormone influences skeletal muscle. So that's how that whole thing kind of comes, comes to bear. Um, the next one is cold hands and cold feet or lower than normal body temperature. So this one is, this one goes right along with previously how I talked about the, um, how thyroid hormone influences energy production. If your body is not able to produce a sufficient amount of energy, um, by the way, energy when it's, when it's burned produces heat like a fire. You can think about that. The, a fire is producing a ton of heat, um, because it's burning a ton of energy. The same thing is true in your body. If you're not burning, if you're not creating a bunch of energy and you're not burning that energy, then two things are going to happen. One, number one, you're going to gain weight, of course. And number two, your body temperature is going to is going to be reduced, right? That's just obvious. Now, another thing is that T3 te seems to have, specifically T3 and thyroid hormone, um, seems to have an effect on brown adipose tissue, tissue, which is brown fat, and that is the fat that helps your body burn more calories and produce more energy, thus increasing your basal metabolic rate. So there's another kind of tie in there, but but just so you know. All right, and then the last one is number 10 being constipation or changes to bowel movement. So thyroid hormone has a direct action on the motility of your gastrointestinal tract. Motility means, well, let's back up and explain with the GI tract. So your GI tract ha um, undergoes something called peristalsis, and, and that's a fancy word for saying it's always moving. Okay, now we're not so much concerned at, at, by the fact that it's always moving, we're more concerned about the fact of how quickly is it moving. Because if it's moving very quickly, then you end up with, you know, uh, diarrhea. If it's moving too slow, then you end up with constipation. So you really need to be, it needs to be moving at a certain rate so that you can, number one, absorb all the nutrients necessary, and number two, so you can reabsorb water in the colon so that you, you don't become dehydrated and, you know, lose it all on your stool. So you need to strike that balance. Now what happens is, thyroid hormone itself is involved in the regulation of this process. So it helps your body determine how quickly the bowels are going to move or how slowly they're going to move if in the case of hypothyroidism. So what happens if you don't have the signal from your thyroid telling your GI tract to move? Well, the whole system slows down and therefore you present with constipation, right? And the constipation is a big deal because if you slow down the entire system, then you're all, you're, you have an increased risk or an increased susceptibility to developing other gastrointestinal issues such as small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or small intestinal fungal overgrowth. So that actually, believe it or not, is quite a big deal. And that's why constipation by itself is not necessarily ominous. It's what happens as a result of, uh, it's what happens um, because of what thyroid hormone is doing um, physiologically. So that's why that's important. So those, I would say, are probably the top 10 most common symptoms and uh, of hi the hypothyroid patients experience. Now, do you have to have all 10 of these symptoms to have hypothyroidism? No, that, that not necessarily. But I would say if you have three or four of those 10 that I just listed, there is a very high chance that you have suboptimal thyroid function in your body. Now, the, the, that's not the question. The question is, the, well, now what you need to do is find, you need to prove it. So you need to be getting all the testing that I've talked about in previous studies. So anyway, I hope you guys found that helpful. Um, yes, there are many more symptoms of hypothyroidism. Don't get me wrong. These are just the 10 most common that I experience, And I want to explain to the, explain to you how and why they happen. So you show you're armed with that knowledge. Again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, and I will try and get back to them as soon as I can. Otherwise, I hope you guys found this helpful.